Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 16th of September and it's National Guacamole Day. And a big happy birthday to Nick Jonas, Richard Marks, Amy Poehler and Brooke Gray. As the queue continues day and night with over four miles of mourners slowly walking past the body of Queen Elizabeth II lying in state, more details have emerged over the plans for Monday's state funeral at Westminster Abbey. The Queen herself was involved in the planning for what's likely to be one of the biggest ceremonial events held in the UK since the end of World War II. The whole event's tightly scheduled with the Queen's piper due to play a lament at the end of the ceremony, followed by a national two-minute silence at midday. 200 people from the Queen's Birthday Honours list have been invited to be part of the 2,000 official attendees. There'll also be hundreds of world leaders including Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron and Japanese Emperor Naruhito. Retired RAF Marshal Edward Stringer says it will require an enormous amount of security and planning. They're all going to be in one building in one city and that city is London. I think it's almost unprecedented uh, and so of course the security operation uh, will be intense. Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby who visited the queue on Thursday spoke to many as they filed past and he felt the act of queuing for so long was a significant gesture. And in some senses these people have been queuing for these hours and making this sacrifice of sleep and effort almost on behalf of so many people in the world who can't be here but to say thank you. Even as plans are made for the state funeral, the energy crisis continues, with Parliament suspended until the period of mourning has come to an end. Liz Truss did announce plans for a price freeze for domestic customers, but the details for businesses are not clear, and all that's now been put on ice. However, new Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has been working on an emergency mini-budget for next Friday, which could see winter tax cuts and more detail on energy support. He's also proposing something called Big Bang 2.0, which would see the cap on bankers' bonuses lifted as the government looks to drive growth growth in the economy. Rachel Winter, partner and manager at Killick & Co, explained why to Radio 4's Today programme. Well, the Chancellor's made it very clear that his sole objective is growth. The original Big Bang um, came in the time of Margaret Thatcher, and he's clearly using that phrase um, to try and show that this new policy of taking uh, the bonus cap away will help the city to perhaps grow again and, and regain some of the growth that it lost because of the Brexit rules. But bankers are not the only sector in need of help, and Chief Executive of the city pub group, Clive Watson, says there's a simple thing that would make a big impact. But the one thing they can do tomorrow, which will have a big impact, is to reduce the impact. Thursday saw the EU Commission President visit Kyiv to meet with Ukrainian President Zelensky and pledge that Europe would continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Her visit coincided with a summit meeting in Uzbekistan between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese leader Xi Jinping, which saw them discuss the war in Ukraine and China's issues with Taiwan. The pair pledged that China and Russia would work together as great powers, but the Chinese leader still hasn't been drawn into endorsing Russia's invasion, despite Vladimir's best efforts. In connection with the Ukrainian crisis, I understand your questions and your point of view. I firmly intend to adhere to the principle of one China and condemn the provocations of the United States and neighboring countries in Ukraine. Authorities in Ukraine have uncovered a new mass grave in the city of Izium, which may contain over 400 bodies similar to the discovery made in Bucha. And following the dramatic success of the Ukrainian counterattack this week, Ukrainian MP Kira Rudik says there's still more to do before the cold weather comes. The strategy is to take as much as possible till the winter hits, because in winter it would be much easier for us to hold the ground. In the US, as November elections are coming sharply into focus, a new Republican strategy to highlight what they call a border crisis has emerged. Texas Governor Greg Abbott bust unwitting migrants who'd arrived from Venezuela to Washington and then dumped them outside Vice President Kamala Harris's official residence. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent two plane loads of migrants to Martha's Vineyard, the holiday home of rich Democrats. These political stunts have attracted widespread condemnation, with suggestions that the governors are effectively behaving like human traffickers, including from Massachusetts State Representative Dylan Fernandez. Immigrants um, who were told that they would be greeted here um, with a place to stay and with jobs, they're using children as political pawns. But the island community has really rallied together. Still to come on the Smart 7 is a Fed exit and Lewis Capaldi puts on his DJ voice. Right after this. 
Welcome back. One of the all-time tennis greats, Roger Federer, announced he's intending to retire after next week's Lava Cup in London. At 41, he's been a giant of the sport, winning 20 Grand Slam titles and becoming the first male player to win more than 14 Grand Slams. But after over 1,500 matches, he says his body's just not up to the pace of the ATP Tour anymore. Tennis has treated me more generously than I ever would have dreamt, and now I must recognise when it is time to end my competitive career. The Labour Cup next week in London will be my final ATP event. I will play more tennis in the future, of course, but just not in Grand Slams or on the Tour. Lewis Capaldi's had a busy week. He's been out promoting his new single, Forget Me, which saw him stripped to his underwear for a billboard and off on a range seven inches of me live on TV. Of course, he meant a gift of his single, obviously. That wasn't the end of it, though. He also told the Heat 7 how Niall Horan smells, and then he popped up as the new presenter of Capital Breakfast. It's the Capital Breakfast show. I'm Lewis Capaldi, and I'm joined by Roman Kemp, Sandy Jane, and Sean Welby. How are we doing, guys? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank it's you. great to have you all here. Thank uh, you. I've Thanks got buttons us. here. Can I press any of these? Yeah, you can press yeah, any yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, what's we got? Hi. Woo. Get out of those beds. <laughs> Just stay away from podcasting, all right, fella? Back up. She was one of the biggest stars of the 80s and 90s and one of the best-selling artists of all time. She was Whitney Houston and now 10 years after her death, there's a new movie on the way. It's called I Want to Dance with Somebody and follows the early days of Whitney as she was discovered by music business legend Clive Davis. English actress and BAFTA winner Naomi Aki plays Whitney and it hits cinemas on December the 21st. What's your name again? Whitney Elizabeth Houston. A uh, common criticism of you, your music isn't black enough. Look, I don't know how to sing black and I don't know how to sing white either. I know how to sing. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.